uh, I'm going to try and get him to just um, believe me. Uh, I could do an influence, or I could try like a... What, what what kind of skill would you think that would be? Would that be a charm, or would that be a... I, I will remind you that the the attempt to not have this happen to you was already failed once. Right? Like, you, the, he's following the weak way's orders, so I think that you would have to buy, like do it in a different way, right? There's no negotiation okay. or anything here, because that, that check has already been failed. Uh, okay. So you might have to, like, like you said, you might have to force him not to check you. Yeah, okay, so we're going to try to influence him to just completely believe me that I have no weapons. Okay, all right. Uh, so you need to make the check, and then this is the discipline versus discipline, right? Uh, yeah, this is going to be discipline v. discipline. All right. Uh, so go ahead. You still have to roll the force dice, though, right? Yeah, well, it's going to roll both at the same time. Oh, so right. As sure, long sure, as sure. here's the setup. So it's going to be this and this. And, um, I think that in this scenario, I'm going to add a black dice. Uh, simply because, like, it's already a tense situation, and mm -hmm. you already, like, Jack's already had this argument. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just, it's just gonna be an average check with a black dice there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip a... Sure. ...point. Uh, um, there's your upgrade. Ready I really are. don't want asking questions. Alright, so we good? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> So, uh, force point succeeds because it doesn't need a specific stuff, but uh, does not succeed at the check. Right. So, is my discipline really that bad? Two yellows oh, isn't just... isn't bad uh, per se. Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Rolling. Oh, well, it's actually a yellow and a green, right? Because you had one upgrade. Yeah. Yep. Um. So. All right. I think that you, and this is, in, I think we agree, this is, you're trying to force him not to do something. Uh, uh, it is, can force an emotional state or believe something untrue, which it's not really untrue, but I want him to believe it without having to go yeah. through the... So, so essentially, he, he doesn't believe you, no matter your yeah. influence here. Right, um, and we'll throw up a conflict. Yeah, and I think the failure condition here is... Maybe maybe the Aquilish like kind of stops for a moment, uh, and you see jo um, Jorel. He kind of like looks, and he says, "Do it anyway." Because remember, so I kind of hold my. Yep, I know. Yeah, there, there, there's another force user here that can kind yep. of sense vaguely what's going on. Yep. Um, so yeah, he he pats you down. Now uh, I'm gonna roll a perception check because because I'll give you the fairness in him not to find that thing that I think you have that I think you don't want him to. Yes. Uh, it'll be it'll be an average check, I would say. Also, I'm just using the, the stat line for this. That's why it shows up as just. Please don't find the thing. Um, it doesn't work, so I can try and bullshit my way out. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So he he pats you down. Um, you got lucky on that one for sure. Uh. <laughs> He pats you down and like he's, he he probably like so unlucky. you see him like uh he like uh feels something at your belt and kind of like looks and then just kind of like shakes his head doesn't yeah it's not something that he recognizes to take away um and then he moves on with his life <laughs> so Kin do you have any I weapons have... Uh, I have a pair of... it is a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a pair of brass knuckles. Uh, I would just hand them over. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's all you have, right? There's no. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, yeah, hmm. the, the thing about um, you know martial arts, uh, the the talents I have, I can really only use while I'm unarmed. Right. So I can't really use anything. Right. They don't know that though. Goes up yeah. to Mouse. Mouse kind of like unslings this giant slug thrower from her back and just kind of like hands it over. Uh, and then he walks up to you, Dash. Um, are you going to try and conceal anything, or are you just going to give him your, your weapons that you well, have? Well, the thing is, I have no, uh, no way to conceal my pistol, because it's literally in a holster, so I guess 
I, I roll my L. Okay. I kind of like slump and defeat and just give him the pistol. Okay, cool. Awesome. So you, you hand over the pistol and he just nods and, uh, you know, he does the pat down on you guys but doesn't find anything else. Um, uh-huh. And uh, eventually walks over and, and hands all the stuff. Uh, uh, actually, he just probably has it all, like, in a bag. Um, and the Weequay, uh woman, she goes, very well, you'll come with us now. Um, and I assume that you all are somewhat complicit at this point. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the scene a little. Rolling. So. Oh, something happened with my wounds. Uh. What the heck what happened? There? I was three and three. Huh. I don't know why I did that. Weird. There you go. Uh, okay. So let me let me get this all set up. It's gonna be great. And there. X, X, there, here, there. Cool. So, you all fly for a while uh, in on board the ship, uh, and you're you're placed. Can we in... tell if we leave atmosphere? Uh, you do not specifically do not cool um so on board the ship you you're you're taken down and i think the scene that we see is um you can tell you're being flown away from the capital uh because you you're you're probably in transit long enough to know that you wouldn't be anywhere within the capital um and i think that uh when you're when you're kind of let out and you're not like restrained or anything um but the ship that you get on is clearly like a um like a, a freighter of some sort uh but it's clearly like a or actually it's probably it's probably more akin to like a troop transport type of ship um where all these droids obviously came from et cetera, et cetera. and you take it over to a um uh as you descend out of the troop transport you can see that you're in the jungles of of uh corellia right because corellia is very lush very kind of jungly planet uh outside of the capital and so the big tall trees and the shade that kind of drops over and you can hear various animals kind of um, uh, hooting and hollering in the distance. And uh, as you guys are brought, um, you're brought to like a, uh, uh, a facility and you can tell that there's like, uh, there's these big tall smokestacks that have like this steam or, or some type of fumes coming out of the top that kind of billow up into the sky a little bit, but dissipate fairly quickly it's kind of like the white steam um not like black industrial smoke uh that we see and as you guys get there uh you're led in through the the main doors of this this uh female weekway who's like kind of like supporting Jarell um as they kind of walk and uh as you enter you can see there's like a whole multitude of things going on you can tell there's like uh there's vehicles that are coming to pick things up uh there's a couple of like um uh transports that come in and out with supplies uh some food stuff so you can see a various smattering of aliens and and droids and all kinds of other things um kind of scattered throughout this this facility and you're walked over to these rooms and they're not really like prison cells um they are more akin to like barracks rooms but as you're you're you guys are separated and kind of put into to separate areas um and you are instructed to remain here until needed. Um, so I want to go quickly around the table and ask everyone, like, in this scenario, what do you do? You're kind of left alone. The doors are secured from the outside. Um, 
someone like Mouse could easily probably get through. In fact, Kin, you probably realized you could probably rip the door off if you really had to. Um, do we, uh, we We don't have our communicators yet, right? No, no, you do not have your communicators. Um, but there is, there are like, uh, there is a communications panel in the room that you're in. Um, to right. reasonably like talk with with maybe immediately outside the door or maybe like the control area or whatever. Um, so. You know, someone as far as Mouse could uh, reconfigure to speak with us if she's smart enough to realize. You know, maybe she could. Maybe she should try and do that, huh? huh. So while it's going to be one right way, now, so. We aren't able to communicate with each other, right? Hmm? Right now, we have no way of communicating with each other. Like, right we couldn't now, chat correct. to each other or anything. Well, I don't know. Do you try shouting? Because oh, remember, yeah, I... you, don't, you don't know... You, you, personally, as a character, are not aware of what vicinity that you're in, right? Yeah, alright. Jax wouldn't say anything, so... Ken would walk over to uh, the door and shout out. Is anyone there? Alright. Uh, why don't everybody make a perception check? Okay. Great. Another check I can fail, even though I've got great. Uh, dice actually, on. hold on. Let me set up the roll for it. Oh. Yeah, no. Look. I even got a decent roll. I didn't even get a decent roll. Fucking right, blank on. yellow dice. All right. So. Uh, I'm adding a black dice just because there's closed doors and other people talking in the hallways and stuff like that. All right, everybody, go ahead and make a roll now. Apparently, I heard Zion. I mean, Kin. Uh, oh, I gotta, roll, I gotta roll for mouse. Hold on. Mouse, 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 mouse. Apparently, out of everyone, I heard Kin. Um, I'll be right back. Probably a I have to though. do something. Okay. Mouse heard too. So, um, so Mouse hears you, Kin, uh, and now I have, I have a question, Kin. Um, does Mouse think like would would there have ever been a scenario where maybe on the ship that you and Mouse resided on, you were ever separated and you had a way of communicating? I don't think uh, we have not anything that wouldn't be. No, I don't think so. But she might know enough about how Kin works to do something with a radio. Okay. But I don't think so. I, I'm yeah. So maybe hearing that you're kind of in the same area, Mouse decides that she's going to attempt to um, maybe figure out, like, coordinate where you are, so that she can get a. Uh, Get a computer's check in here. It's gonna be hard. Uh, she's gonna use a light side point though. I think it's appropriate in this scenario. Uh, and I think that she's gonna try a computer's check to uh, get the communicators to talk to each other. Let's see what happens. Not super great at this. Hmm. No. So I think that the advantage here is kin. Uh, you, you hear your communicator after you shout that, like, kind of crackle and pop, um, and you walk over, and I think you hear, uh, Mouse is like, Kin, Kin, and then it kind of, like, shuts down, um, and the connection doesn't quite go through. So how long have we been here? So you've probably been in you've probably been in this scenario for perhaps maybe ten minutes or so. Uh, you haven't been here very long. Um, it's kind of like right as you as you're arrived and kind of put in these in this area. Okay, so Kim is just gonna sit back down. Yeah, I don't think he would try to open the doors just yet. I mean, he's he's not sure about the situation outside, and there are right. too many people that picked us up. Right. Uh, what about anybody else? Zian or, or Jax? Uh, Jax, I want to roll a perception check. Okay, for what exactly? Um, j 
just to see, like, ja Jax has, like, you know, like, his skullduggery is quite good, so he could potentially, he would want to look at ways he can find of getting himself out of the situation, but not, he doesn't want to act on it yet. So I'm not rolling a skullduggery check to pick a lock, it's more like I'm trying to see right now what my options are. Yeah, I think that that's, I think that's totally okay. So, yeah. Uh, let uh, me I just... set up roll here. Uh, I think it's just going to be average. Cool. And you're cool. in a controlled environment, so no need for a black dice. Just an average cool. check. Yeah, cool. Let me check that so, out. So, two successes. Oh, black dice. Two successes. Uh, I'll give you two options here. Obviously, uh, getting mechanical and or skullduggery and, and opening the door manually is seems totally possible. Uh, it mm -hmm. seems like a possibility. Um... Also, I think that as you were kind of coming through the facility, you being Jax, uh, picked up on the fact that um, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of civilians here, um, not a whole lot of like guards or armed people. Um, it kind of looks like a little community outside, and so you know that wherever you're being held is probably not designated for actual like prisoners. Um, but in addition to that, you know that from the area that you were placed in, uh, there is a lot of, like, traffic that goes in and out. It's not like a prison ward. It's like a public area. Uh, so there's a lot of people who are not the people who know who you are. So it's possible maybe using powers of, you know, negotiation or, or you know... Um, perhaps charming or somehow you can convince somebody that you know maybe you got locked in and you need to get let out and they might be able to figure it out but that obviously carries a lot of risk as well because you know they might all oh, they might be the people who know you're supposed to be in here or uh -huh. they might go tell the people who know you're supposed to be in here and then you get in trouble so so uh, what's up um, kim uh well i just remember something from what Kim would feel in this situation because he really doesn't like being alone. Mm. Uh, he's, he's starting to really walk back and forth in the cell. He's just uh, kind of starting to freak out. Yeah. And it's not dark, but it is enclosed. And yeah. He doesn't like um, enclosed there's, spaces. There's no one else there. Yeah. So he kind of walks over the door, bangs a little bit on it. When nothing, ha nothing happens, he starts pacing back and forth, yeah. Okay, cool. Zian, what about you? Uh, you said that the panel might communicate to, like, some sort of control or mm -hmm. something outside. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use the panel and attempt to contact somebody and ask if I can speak to Jarell. Yeah, so there's like, a, there's, like, a comms button that you hit, and you can see, like, it sends a signal, and then after a few moments, um, you hear a, a human voice come on the... Uh, it doesn't have like a display or anything. It just transmits comms and it says, "Yes, how may we how may we be of assistance?" Uh, I was wondering if it would be possible to speak with uh, your mechanic Jarrell. I wanted to see how his wounds were healing. See if I could be of any more assistance. Stand by. And there's like a long pause, um, and the voice comes back on and says, "Jarrell is healed just fine." He's being seen to by our medics. Is there anything else I could assist you with? Would it be possible to speak to him? Unfortunately, he is currently occupied. We are okay. sending a representative to speak with you now, though. Well, could you pass on a message that if he ever gets time, I would like to speak with him? Yes, I can do that. Um, and he just, like, kind of goes back to meditating. Yeah, sure. So I think that um, some time passes here. Uh, there, there is some time where um, there are a couple of people who come by, maybe, maybe speak uh, like through the door, um, saying that, like, "Hey, you know, I, I'm here to bring your food and water." And time kind of travels a little bit slowly as well, right? Because you're you're kind of in an enclosed space. You don't know what time it is. The lights are always on. Um, and I think that uh, eventually um, 
let's see who does who does she go to first okay so she goes to uh actually i should just roll the d4 uh she goes to you first Jax. so Jax, um you hear a uh your calm like maybe you're laying in your bed or whatever uh and the calm panel goes off and you walk over to it and answer it yeah and you can see there's um uh there's uh kind of a still image of the exterior um where you can see there's the 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 female weekway and she's standing there and she says yes yeah, so i'm sorry about the abrupt departure you understand we had to depart before any more incidents occurred how are you how are you doing are you doing well i mean i'd like to know if my friends are okay i haven't been able to speak to them or anyone else um, I don't like being cooped up. I don't like being out without my blaster. So, no, not particularly. I'm not doing okay. But I guess it's better than being stunned to oblivion. That is that is a shame. I apologize for the inconvenience, but you understand there were safety concerns. I have something for you. Uh, and she kind of, like, you see in the, the image kind of flickers, and she holds up the blaster. Yeah, Jax just stays silent. Like, she's not sure what she means by that. If you'd like, you can have it back. But first, we must ask you some questions. Is that all right? Of course. If you want to know what happened, can I recommend our droid accompanies me as he was with me and he can corroborate what I tell you? Yeah, I think there's a moment, she says. Yes, perhaps we will take your stories together but first i just want to speak with you i'm going to open the door now promise you won't do anything rash sure yeah and she just nods and she opens the door and as she walks in you can see it's her and um her aqualish buddy um and then just like it's just like two droids who are just standing outside and i think it's the first time you see them they're they've probably been out there the whole time right just like kind of standing mm -hmm. there uh and they just walk in and uh she says, ha, ah, yes, well, again, we, we want to get you out of here as soon as possible, but you understand uh, we must do our own research. We did an investigation of the area. It seems that Prague is dead. Can you tell me how this came to be? Uh, yes, I can. Um, we came into the kind of the area as a group, and we were looking to go to the Indigo. And then a massive firefight broke out, and we all got separated. Uh, me and the droid ended up in the, uh, was it the guard booth or something where we were? Yeah, you were in, like, the guardhouse. Yeah. We uh, ended up in the guardhouse, and um, uh, we were attacked by a Rodian. Uh, and we fended him off, but we didn't kill him. He was actually killed by a uh, security droid. Yeah, and I think that... Um... I think that she nods and she says, Well, I appreciate your honesty, at least. We did some tests. The wounds he sustained were non-lethal up until the last, and it does not appear to have been fired from this blaster. As I saw, your droid friend does not carry blasters. He does not. He doesn't carry weapons, gen generally. Hmm. Indeed. And she kind of looks at the Aqualish and she says, Remind me to take extra precautions when we speak with the droid. And he just kind of, like, nods slowly. Uh, and she turns back to you, and she says, Yes, well, uh, you'll be happy to know that none of your friends are harmed, and allowances are being made for the quick thinking of your allies in saving Jarell. I, for one, am very appreciative of that. Yeah, uh, if say you're going this... If you're going to speak to the droid, can I recommend you bring the Deveronian? Uh, they have a close connection. He's very protective of her, and seeing her will calm him down. Yes, indeed. We'll take that under consideration. Also, I understand that there are some repairs that need to be made to your droid. Is this Deveronian? Is she the mechanic of your crew? You could say that. 
Yes, well, we must see if we can assist with that. That will certainly help our well, earning our trust of our esteemed guests, will it not? There's other things that would help earn our tr earn my trust. You have a suggestion. I want my blaster back. Yes, very well. I think that can be arranged. And she pulls it out, and you can see that very deftly she kind of like runs through the inspection of it. Um, and you can tell that like she she disables it in a way that like you'll have to recharge it right before you're able to use yeah. it again. Um, and she kind of like sets it on the table that you have in there, and she says, "It is for you." And then as they as they get up and go to leave, I think she turns around and she says, "The importance of emotional attachment is not lost on me." And then like kind of just like leaves it at that, and then walks out. Um, so then there's probably a conversation that's had with Mouse uh, that doesn't need to be displayed, but I think that Kin um, yeah. I'm going to regain the two strain I lost from uh, losing my blaster, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so uh, your comm link goes off. Mine. Sure. Sorry, let me, do we have a comm links again? Or well, I'm sorry, it... I'm sorry. The, um, the communication oh, yeah. station in the room. Yeah. Okay. So you answer it, and you see Mouse on the other side. Uh, and she's like, Kin, Kin, Kin it's, it's me, I'm, I'm here. Um, I, I think that, and she kind of like looks over her shoulder, and you can see that the, the Weequay woman is standing there with her arms crossed, along with the Aqualish. And she's like, I think we're okay. She wants to talk to you, but she, she said that I, I should be with you. And also, if I could see to your repairs, maybe. Will you let us in? Yes, please come in. Yeah, and so even though you have no control over that, right? She opens the door from the outside, and and Mouse walks in, um, followed by the Weequay woman and uh, the Aqualish, um, and they kind of like they let Mouse and you like reunite. How does that, what does that look like? Uh, well, Kim will just move in really close. Uh, it's not like a hug or something. It's just uh, he he just he's glad to be around people again. Yeah, uh, Mouse probably hugs you though. Um, to be fair, Trolley like nice. throws throws her arms around the middle of you. She says, ah, "Sorry, I didn't get a better chance to look at this. Here, let me let me get to work while they they talk. You know, they actually don't seem too bad. It's mostly uh, visual damage." Yeah, and she kind of like peels back the repair patch a little bit, and kind of like ew, like winces at the busted up ocular device. Um, and uh, the Weequay woman, she she comes in and she says, "Yes, uh, I understand your designation is a one nn or Kin. That it is, is correct. It is a lovely name, Kin. Thank you." Yes, well, I would like to tell me in, in your own words, or perhaps if you would prefer transferring it to data, what exactly happened? M and specifically when dealing with the Rodian you encountered, the one who gave you those nasty scars. Mm. I was engaged with some security officers. I was trying to help my friends. And the Rodian spotted me from the across the room, called me out, and then he charged at me with the axe. Huh. Yes, that does sound like that does sound like prob. Now, when you say you were attempting to help your friends, who who were these friends? Uh I gestured to Mouse. Mouse and the rest of my crew. Huh. So the ones that are here as our guests. Yes. What about the others? What about the security droids, or maybe even the thugs that were there? We were investigating uh, on behalf of one of our crew members. His friend has become involved with your activities. 
I see. Yes, it's starting to make sense now. I think to make sense indeed. Well, we'll leave Mouse in here for a little while longer so she can see to your repairs. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to communicate. Supplies, anything like that. Um, so she kind of like gets, stands up and, and goes to walk out and the door opens and closes behind you and Mouse kind of like breathes a sigh of relief. Uh, she's like, Finn, I don't understand. I tried to separate some of them, but what, what's going on? What are we doing here? What do they want with us? I believe, well, these were the people who convinced Dash's friend to do what he did. Well, pretty easy to convince a man who only wants credits. Yes, but looking the way things looked up at the way in here, we may have been too quick to choose sides in the conflict. Yes, well, it doesn't, doesn't excuse the fact that we are essentially prisoners. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yes. So, the the next person that they go to is Dash. Um, and Dash, they your communication device goes off at, right by the door. Uh, question, what was her name? Because I, I think he, he may have picked up on her name when her friend said it. Specifically have not given it to you. No you one haven't? Has, oh. No one has said it. Okay, never mind then. I thought you'd done. False memory. Nope. Uh, do you, you, I assume you answer, um, your, your I mean, he, he's kind of like, uh, the only thing, I, I think I rolled a perception check, and I just heard, uh, uh Ken, so knowing, like, well, at least I'm, I'm not that far away, and kind of like, he stands up and presses the button, and kind of like, uh, walks back as he sits down back on his, uh, on, on his bed, just like, relaxed. Yeah, and uh, over the over the communications, uh, you hear the female weekly, and she says, "Yes, I understand that uh, this has been an utter inconvenience for you, but if you would not mind. I would like to get some information from you, ask some questions. If that is all right. May I answer?" Well, I mean, it's not by room, so very well. And you hear like the. <laughs> The door opens and and she and the the Aquilish enter. He he is still standing down. He's like he doesn't. He kind of like uh, he knows that my, he doesn't know if it's true, but he's just like trying to relax because he kind of strained himself uh, to like try to help her friend and just help his friend. So basically, it was a rough day. It was a rough day. Yeah, uh, I think that she she walks in and she says, "Yes, well, I was hoping that you could tell me and." Well, your own words. What exactly occurred? And uh, before you start, I would like to say thank you for at least stepping in to save Jorel. Well, that's all my uh, all my Chiburian friend uh, Zayan's help. I just helped him because I uh, trusted him to do the right thing because I guess he cares for people that well. Noted. Jarell is a valuable asset. I would hate to lose him. Well, I I think my friend Zayan thinks so too. I I don't know, but I I have a sneaking suspicion. But I I I don't really understand. I I I, I saw something, but I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, and what is it that you saw? He kind of said, uh, "Can uh, can I try and like uh, make a lore check and kind of like boggle my mind? Like, do do I seriously remember, or can I just shake my head and it's kind of like I it lost on me? I mean, I want to try and remember. You saw what you saw, right? Like you saw if you're speaking of the incident where Zian ripped blaster rifles out of the hands of droids. I mean, you saw that happen. You can infer. And, and he, you can and infer then, from uh, that what you will." There, there's also uh, the thing like there was gifts. There was the thing that happened with Ken. It's like they, 
they mentioned a gift and I don't know if you've heard of the force before. <laughs> yeah, I think she just kind of nods and she says, ah. So this friend of yours, Zian. <laughs> they are well, a, a force user, you say. I well, I I guess. But I think maybe your friend would know too, if I've heard that they can sense each other. Interesting. Interesting. Well, what give me give me an accounting of the battle that you were involved in. Well, I didn't really do much. Aside from uh, being separated from everyone else, so I didn't know that uh, some of them were heavily damaged. And as everything started, I managed to get to the garage, and I saw your friend uh, find me off against the, the Janus droids. I did try and get in, uh, and uh, I, I kind of understood why he didn't want me to get in, and I also tried to help him. Uh, get a advantage, but during the chaos, he didn't understand my uh, suggestion of a maneuver. And uh, and then that, I I, made, I mostly tried to help my friend as I entered. And then I, me and him saw him get shot and just, that was it. They tried to uh, force us into uh, uh, being imprisoned, even though your friend was greatly wounded. And I, I wasn't gonna let him because that's that's cruel. Well, technically, it's kind of like, kind of sort of like a lie. Do do I have to roll for that, or I'm kind of being truthful because I mean that sounds like no exactly idea. what you did. So well, the, yeah, the, technically it's true. Yeah. Leaving out some details. Yeah, lie by omission is not in this case. I think a problem. Um, Deception, yes. And I think she says, uh, she says, I certainly appreciate your help, and you are certainly one of the reasons why Darrell is still with us. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I hope to get you out of here as soon as possible. Just understand that it was necessary in the time. We yeah, have. Yes, I'm, I'm going to take a while on flying my ship. I, I feel too cramped in here. He huh. jokes. Ah, yes. You own a ship. I, um, me and my crew, we kind of met by chance, and I guess I'm the captain pilot of the group. Even though they call, don't it's call fantastic. me captain. I, now, I've heard tell that there is another member of your crew. Um, that is not here. Who are you speaking to uh, about? Because uh, I only know one, but I don't know if you're speaking about him. It has has no purpose. The the droid kin simply stated that one of your friends, I think, was in some sort of trouble, involved in in this in some way, but eh, it matters not. Well, let's just say in a way, uh, he is between uh, it all, in a, in a sense, let's just say. Interesting. Well, I'm sure that everything is okay. Well, hopefully for us and him, because we're we're kind of like doing this for our friend, because uh, Janice kind of have a bullseye on him, sort of to sort of say. Yeah, and I think at that she outright laughs. She's just, <laughs> yes, yes, they certainly have their bullseyes on many things. That is true. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you. We shall of course. depart now. Expect to be contacted in the morning. About uh, coordinating your release. Yeah, it takes time. I uh, love being cramped in a barrack. Reminds me of my old uh, recruit days. He kind of like jokes. Kind of like hinting like maybe he's an ex military pilot or something. He's just like, he, he's not hiding anything because who the fuck cares? It's done and done. Yeah. If they say like you're an ex pilot, I'm going to say I don't care anymore. Yeah. So I think he, that he's not like secretive about it. Yeah, I think they just nod and depart, and I think that they'll walk out the door. And Zian, you're you're last on the list here. Uh, yeah. And I think that like there's the on your your comm terminal. Can I eye it and stand up and maybe do a little stretch? Yeah. And answer it. Yeah, and you can see it's the the Weequay woman. She says, "Yes, 
I would like to enter and ask you a few questions, if that is all right. Of course. Very well. And, like, the, the door slides and it's her and the Aqualish that enter again, and she says, mm -hmm. um, So, tell me, how is it you came to be in the wrong place at the wrong time in this scenario? Uh, saw that there was a firefight opening up. I tried to protect the civilians nearby. And I attempted to minimize other sorts of civilian and casualties. Yes, and then, indeed. Quite admirable, I might say. Now, and then I saw that uh, your mechanic, I guess, I guess his name is Jorel, is that what she's called him? Indeed, that is his uh, name. He, he was uh, severely injured, and I rushed to try and heal him. Yes, and for that we are very grateful. Jorel is a very useful asset to me. Well, dealings that we do. I see. But I must ask, Jorel stated that there was some sort of... Uh, what was the word that he used? Obsession with him? Can you describe any of that for me? Um... He merely looked like somebody who might have been a little down on his luck, or in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I make a habit of uh, helping people in those situations. I see. Well, you are certainly with the correct crew. Very eclectic bunch, if I might say so. But that doesn't matter. See, the purpose of all this, and why I am telling you, is because I believe you will Perhaps be able to grab the ear of your friends. Our intent is never to hurt or harm anyone. As you can see, we were not the instigators of this particular skirmish. We are simply trying to defend ourselves from what we now know is Janus. It's not the first time that we've seen this sort of conflict and won't be the last. But Say that again. I am curious about the some of the decisions that your crew members made. Perhaps, perhaps a lesson in uh, prudence might be necessary. You see, we've um, lost a very dear member of our of our society, and that is not. Not directly, well, perhaps it is directly influenced by your friends. And that pains us, and there are people in the society that would want to see justice for that. And perhaps not the same kind of justice that you believe in, or I believe in. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I can see no reason why I will hold any of you beyond the night. You seem to be civilians who are working as freelancers. And although you have committed crimes against us, I think that in the chaos, there are many who might have made your decision. But understand that perhaps before making such rash decisions that end in the loss of life, maybe we should take a step back and Understand what we are fighting for. Because I think we can both agree that a fight without purpose... Well... That is simply slaughter. I can agree to that. But what are you fighting for? Freedom, of course. For those and... All those underneath the thumb of... Corporations... That... Will hold them... Perhaps not forcefully, but against their will nonetheless. Would you not agree that that is a admirable goal? I suppose at face value, though many people may consider they are doing the right thing, but use the wrong tactics. 
and some people may be doing the wrong thing but using the right tactics. Things are not as simple as all of that, I'm sure, as you know, but for now, just understand that redemption can be made for this, and I cannot say there will not be others who are not as not as mild as myself who will seek justice for our dear friend Prague. Infernal blaster you can't say shit. What the My understanding is that you have also caused someone to be in a great deal of pain and suffering due to your actions. Oh? And who might that be? An individual that was known by our captain. I don't know much about him. Yes. The same mysterious individual that we keep speaking of. Well, I'm sure that in the morning there will be time to speak again, but for now I must be leaving. Think upon what I've said. Perhaps you can reach out to your crew members. Sometime, ah. sometime in the early morning we'll move you all away from the compound. I see no reason to hold you against your will. That is certainly not what we are about. At least in the long term. Um. Hold on. Uh. Now, are you expecting me to reach out to my crew members without any opportunity to speak to them until the next day? Or do you mean after we've been released? She kind of like nods and she says, yeah, yes, I, I guess that would be somewhat hard. Perhaps we will find a common area to put all of you until you can safely be transported away. Would that be amicable? I suppose so. Very well. I would like to maybe offer a bit of trade in addition. Yeah, I think I'm... her eyebrow just raised. I'm very concerned with the wounds that your mechanic has suffered. I'm a healer by trade, and I would very much like to make sure that anybody who has been in my care has been able to make a full recovery. If it were possible, I would like to speak with him, maybe tr finish treating his wounds if possible. Well, that is for Jarell himself to decide, but I can attest that he is being seen to by some of the finest medical professionals we have on staff. He is not in danger of death, but one does not simply take a blaster bolt to the torso and not have any lasting repercussions. But I will pass along the message that you wish to speak with him. Thank you. Very well. And I was set about to seeing you guys in a common area. Perhaps so you can be reunited and not locked in these musty old rooms. Thank you. Yeah, and she just like gets up and she, she kind of like walks out and opens the door and the Aqualish kind of just follows her and she says, um, uh, I think she turns as she goes to leave and she says, and just so you are also aware, sometimes things need to appear like they are immoral in order to become safe. And like, without any other word, she kind of just nods and closes the door uh, on her way out. And I think that that, with all of you, maybe we get like a, like a small montage scene of the group of you being kind of brought to a common area uh, like maybe like a cafeteria style area where you guys can be reunited. But I think that that is probably a great place to end. So. Cool. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Next week, uh, as long as I still have a house, uh, we <laughs> will, uh, we will continue on and find out more about the, uh, the Zulzan 
group. I know what all the, what these guys are all about, and perhaps delve a little bit deeper into why they're in such a heated dispute with Janus. So, uh, experience for surviving the battle. Uh, I think everybody can get fifteen experience Yay. for surviving, not dying, not exploding. Although it was very close, Kin, you were yeah, <laughs> you were on <laughs> the brink. Yeah, we, we still have to deal with your critical in this point. Yeah. Um, so, fantastic. Now, before I forget again, everybody raise your, your strain threshold by one and dash raise it by two. Because it was taken down for the obligation. Yep. Then I'll roll throughout the week and we'll determine whether or not we need to reduce it again. But, uh, that is all I have for you today. Uh, except for conflict, right? We had some... Yes. We had some conflict earning. I think there were three or four checks i think that were uh, all dark side i i gave myself six conflict in a that seems fair the mm. uh there were like three or four dark side uses but also the aggression and the the actions that zian has taken has not been the most jedi like so. yeah so it was it, it was i think it was interesting to talk about the uh the fact that like you were the <laughs> You were the <laughs> the unhinged one trying to tell somebody else they're doing it wrong, where the other one was kind of calm about it, right? Like, what are you talking about? This is what I do. All, like, this is how this is how the world works. Uh, whereas I think Zian became a little bit, uh, a little bit perhaps, yeah, on tilt. Um, yeah, Zian doesn't like people wasting their gifts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. So why don't you roll a d10? Uh, six. Hey, you still come out on top though. Yay. Overall, I think the 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 feeling behind your actions, right, mm -hmm. overcomes the fact that you had to use emotions that are not great for, yeah, uh, a Jedi. Very Jedi. Jedi. Fantastic. Cool. I, I am no Jedi. Um, should we be resetting our strain? Yeah. Well? So everybody, go ahead and restart your strain. You'll be you'll be able to do that. Um, Ken will still need to deal with wounds and injuries though, because you got kind of beat up a little bit. I'm actually surprised you guys took the guy that guy out so easily. Uh, I think Jax oh, that was some stupid rolls. Yeah, Jax did some stupid damage to him. Um, absolutely insane damage. So. I also gave myself uh, a bit more wounds because I uh, misread the emergency patch. There was supposed to be three damage each. Fair enough. Oh well, yeah, I thought right, right. The three damage each. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I've, I have five. Wounds. Yeah, you'll you'll have some downtime to deal with that though, and you have mouse, uh, and she'll have some access to some supplies. So great, awesome. Um, away from my ship, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, and you'll have to figure out a way to get back to your ship. But uh, so next week we will deal with uh, however much play you guys want to have with these guys. They they've done their investigation, and you know they're yeah, you guys seem like the the wrong place, wrong time. But what Jack said is absolutely true. You you guys actually got lucky that that. That security droid probably killed Prog in the end, right? Like, huh, yeah. you, you can actually pull it off as self-defense uh, in a chaotic situation, but, you know, that killing blow not being yours is actually great. So, Ooh. Lucky. Uh, indeed. Sometimes sometimes you gotta be lucky. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> I mean, I, I could have endangered everything and uh, tried to drop, uh, drive away. Thankful I didn't because I'm not that, that good at stealth. So Oof, yeah, that would have been a bad roll. Good idea. Uh, that would have been yeah, the that would have been. that would have been the everybody wakes up in those rooms, <laughs> not the you all are led to those rooms. Yeah. Uh, good thing I didn't uh, become rash, and I guess that kind of like makes us like reasonable because if I did that, they were gonna be so nice. Because I'm pretty sure they were going to be more uh, not so lenient. They were going to be like, you kind of started this because you were yeah. the first to jump. Uh, yeah, like, you, you would have you implicated yourself as aggressors. Would have been bad. Yep. Uh, okay. Whereas the information uh, they have... Had on my shoulders. Yeah, the information they have right now is you at least saved one of them. So I mean, you can't be I all bad. Zyan. I I technically <laughs> tried, and I, I don't care because... Fucking Jax almost cost me my my life by fucking shouting that shit. God damn it! 
So, uh, Dash needs to learn that loose lips, lips sink ships. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Dash talks too much. <laughs> Shut up. Right. I was Fantastic. joking about it. I'm going to do my outro. It was uh, great playing with you guys, as always. And uh, we'll see everybody yeah, next week. I have to go. I'll, I'll keep you updated as long as I have a house. All right. Yeah. Good awesome. luck. Okay. Yeah. Cool. See Good you guys luck. next time. Goodbye. Bye. All right, stream. Glad you all could be here. It's been a hell of a lot of fun. Lots of uh, combat in the first half, followed by some... Uh, some interesting interactions. Uh, an interesting Weequay character now uh, with her little Aqualish minion. Um, and uh, a new faction, a new minor faction to deal with on Corellia. We'll see how the, uh, how the group decides to handle this. Next time, Crouch Orders. Glad you're going to be here for episode number five. It was a hell of a lot of fun, uh, as always. You can always do all the things like subscribe and follow and you know all that stuff if you want to know when other stuff happens and that's great awesome i'm gonna go i'm gonna put this on youtube so we'll see everybody next time bye